Hey everyone, welcome back to Duality Repair. Tonight I have a Tektronix 2246 100MHz oscilloscope. This one's got a very obvious symptom, so let's just power it on and take a look. And you can see the trace there. It only covers uh, less than three divisions. And no matter how you try and adjust the position, you can see you can adjust the position to the right. Adjusting the position counter, fully counterclockwise uh, doesn't adjust that position at all. So something obviously wrong. I did hook a probe up to um, each channel, and the horizontal sweep stays in this section. You do get the vertical deflection, which is good. So if we can figure out this horizontal deflection issue, we'll be good. First thing I'm going to start with, uh, just because it's the first thing I thought of, was uh, voltages. <clears throat> if we're not getting the proper voltages to the horizontal sweep circuitry, that uh, uh, could definitely cause this issue. So, The only other thing I was thinking is a physical defect with the CRT. Obviously, that's not going to be repairable by me anyway, so I hope it's not that. I hope it's something electronic. So, With that said, let's dive right into the power supply, um, take a look at some of the test points, all of the test points. The service manual has the test points um, available and uh, their specific ranges listed. So we'll dive right into that. All right, I removed the unit from the case and I flipped it over. This is the bottom board. And all the voltage test points are all along this connector here. So let's go ahead and start testing them. I'll power it up. And I'm in the 200 volt DC range. It's the highest DC voltage on here. It looks to be 130 volts, so let's just go up the rung here. Start at the bottom and I'll read them off to you as they're listed. The bottom one is AC, it's 100 volts. The second pin up is ground. Third pin should be 130 volts DC. That looks good, about 132. Next pin should be positive 55. Slightly high. Nothing too concerning. 58.5. Maybe a concern, but uh, it's there. Next pin, tough to see. Uh, maybe 7 volts, yeah, minus 7 volts, that's good. Next pin looks to be positive 7, looks good. Next pin, positive 15, that one's almost dead on. Next pin, minus 15, yeah, look at that, nothing. So we'll take a look at the schematic and see if uh, the uh, horizontal deflection circuitry uses that minus 15 at all. Uh, hopefully it does. But that's definitely a problem. One other thing to note, I know that there is a fan in here and it's not spinning. So either, you know, it's missing a voltage or the fan's dead. So that's another thing to note. So anyway, we're missing the minus 15 so far. Let's keep going. Next one should be minus 5. Sorry, I lost track. Positive 15. Minus 15's there. Here's minus 5. That one's there. Next one should be ground. So that shouldn't show anything. Next one is uh, line trigger, here's positive 5, yep, and then the last one should be positive 5. Okay, so the only real uh, area of concern as far as voltages go is the minus 15 is missing. So pull up the schematic and again see if that is related uh, or is at all involved in the horizontal deflection circuitry. And um, we'll have to pull the power supply out and try and identify where the minus 15 is uh, getting pulled down or just uh, not being generated. Alright, so I checked the schematic and the sweep circuit definitely does use the minus 15 in two of the uh, the buffer circuits there. So the minus 15 being out could definitely cause our issue. So let's take a look at the power supply schematic. The minus 15 volt uh, portion is very simple. I'm just coming off of the tap here from the transformer and there's just two components in line here. There's this capacitor to ground and this diode. So we want to check these two items. So I'm going to start with the diode. So here's the power supply. You can see it is removed, um, at least mostly removed. It still has the high voltage cable attached that routes all the way through to the CRT. And I'm not going to remove that any further. So um, the board is, is uh, physically removed. Uh, the way it passes its uh, voltage is pretty simple. Let me flip it over here for you so you can see the pins out of the bottom. 
and they go into a board in the bottom, the main board in the bottom, so that's how it's passing its voltages. I have it removed from that main board just to negate any um, inter-circuitry issues that we might have when measuring components. So basically this is an isolated supply. I'm going to start by measuring the diode here. Try and get it in view. So if we look at the board overlay, our diode of interest CR2208 is the fourth one up, and I know it's hard for you to see. It's hard for me to show you the component um, in fine detail as well as the multimeter. So really, uh, I doubt this is going to be shorted. If anything, I think it would be open. Let me go ahead and try and get in there. That's going to be tough. Let me move the meter here. It's messy. Ideally, I'd have this out of the board, but or out of the unit. Uh, I don't think that's really possible with the uh, high voltage transformer. So here's the diode here, one leg, and another leg right there. All right, so it's open with that polarity. Let me check the other polarity here. So obviously we should be open in one side and around six, seven hundred millivolts to the other side. Let's see here. No, we're fully open in both directions. So this diode has gone fully open, and that makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Uh, so with the diode open, obviously the negative 15 volts, uh, it's, it's impossible for that to uh, be transferred to the main board. So we might as well look at the capacitor while we're at it. Uh, I looked at that on the board overlay as well. It's this capacitor right here. I'll have to flip it over to Test that out. Really, just looking for short, uh, short on this. Carefully flip it over. Let's see if I can remember where it is. Yeah, it's right here. Good thing about this is a nice, nice board, nice thick board, and uh, there's no signs of uh, leaking capacitors, which is great. So the board is in pretty good shape. So let's just go ahead and uh, check that capacitor. We are down here, so that's what I'm going to sound like if I short, and we're going to be right, give me a second, right here. Okay, no short, that's good. So I know this is one pin of the capacitor right here, and then the other is one of these three, I think it's one of these two really, but neither of them are shorted. Check all three, they're fine. So. Really, I think that diode is the only th item of concern, really. That's what's causing um, our minus 15 volts to be dropped to nothing, really. So I'm going to I'm going to remove that diode first. We'll test it out of circuit to verify, and if it is bad, I'll order it. All right, here's the diode out of circuit, so let's go ahead and test it. Get my meter on there. Okay, we're fully open there. fully open in both directions. So this diode is confirmed dead. So that's killing our minus 15 volts, which may be the complete cause of our issue, which would be great. I don't believe I have one of these in stock, so I'm going to have to order it. Uh, but when I get it in, I will uh, replace it, and we'll see if I have our minus 15 and got rid of our uh, sweep issue. All right, I found a comparable diode and I replaced it in the power supply. I put everything back together. Obviously, I'm ready to turn it on here. Let's give it a shot. I hear a fan. That's good. That's better. No signal at all. Oh, hey, there we go. Look at that. It's across the whole screen now. That was it. <clears throat> Let me grab a probe here. See how our vertical deflection looks on the calibration. Yeah, look at that. That looks awesome. Change the intensity here a little bit. Shows up so much brighter on camera than it does on. Uh, there you go. Cool, look at that. 
Let's see if the uh, vertical deflection changes. It sure does. Triggers really well, too. Awesome. Let's check channel two. That's channel one. Let's check channel two. Change our coupling. Change our mode to channel two only. Change our triggering to channel two, and that one looks good, too. And change the volts per division. Let's see if we can change this reliably. Yes, we can. That is fantastic. I love it. So what's next? Well, probably check the other channels and throw a few different signals in there. Check a sine wave of the higher frequency. But um, this thing looks much better. It now has the fan on as well. Everything looks really good. Let's see if we can move it up and down. Yeah, that works. Let's go to channel one. Well, we can do this. Add. Go. Oh, that's not what we want. Channel one. There's channel one. There we go. Up and down. Yep, that moves. Move the position left and right. Yes, we can. Cool. There's obviously a whole bunch of different dials and buttons on here for different controls that I haven't touched, but uh, the main failure mode is definitely resolved, which is great. And this thing's fixed. Really, it was just that one diode here. Where is it? Right here. Yeah, right there. It's just a 400 volt, 2 amp diode that uh, went open. Where, where did I find a spare? Well, I was uh, impatient. I have so many other projects I'm working on that I'm waiting for parts. I just wanted to get one project fixed in one night. I wanted to do it, so I found a spare board. This is a power supply board for a TV. And um, see this empty slot right here? I found the diode right there. And it was comparable, 400 volts, 2 amps. Slightly larger package, but not a big deal there. It's obviously working. So that's great. This was a, this was a pretty quick one. Sorry there wasn't a ton of troubleshooting, really. It was, uh, I mean, as soon as we saw the voltages were off, or minus 15 was off, we went from there. Um, it was pretty easy once we identify where that was at in the schematic, and down to one of two components, that capacitor, the diode happened to be a diode. So I'm going to say this thing is fixed. I'm going to move on to the next project. Thanks for watching.